you know, your, your, your stock is that, you know, even with the loss, man, you know, like I said, a ton of people thought you won me personally. I had you winning the fight seven to five. I'm not just saying that because you're right here. You know, I even said it to team Lomachenko and they thought I was crazy. I'm just like, nah, I thought Jermaine won, man. I don't know what you want me to tell you. I just thought the guy won, but, um, you know, just wanted to know your stock is at an all time high right now. Like, you know, you could kind of pick and choose who you want, man. So who's kind of on your radar as a guy that you kind of want next, man. Uh, it's tough, you know, because I still got to still fight under the top rank and depending how things work, you know, it's not so always as easy as fighting somebody from a different stable. As you know, it's not always just a phone call as simple as that, but, uh, it's tough because from fighting from Lomachenko and fighting former world champion, Jamal Herring going from two world champions, another world champion, you know, former world champion, our upcoming, you know, whoever, somebody in the top 10. it got to be somebody in the top 10. I can't go lower than that. So anybody there. Gotcha. Now, you know, I mean, you make a ton of sense, man. You know, boxing is really annoying. You know, you can't really get the fights you want sometimes. Dude is over here. He's over here. Whatever. It's annoying. But, you know, you do have a guy that is signed as top rank who is coming up to 135 in Shakur Stevenson. Um, you know, he hasn't like mentioned your name or like called you out or anything like that. But, you know, that kind of seems like it'll be like a really fun fight, man. What do you kind of think about him as a fighter? I think he's a great fighter. Uh, I think if there's anybody who's going to beat Shakur, it's going to be me. Um, and if I don't beat him, then I think he'll be dominating for a while. But what that's you, what I feel. What exactly makes you feel that you're the guy to beat um, to beat Shakur, man? I, I feel like styles make fights and also the mindset and the mentality, how one goes in. And... Uh, I have a lot of different styles. It's, it's the whatever kind of it's whoever Jermaine wants to pull out that night, you know. And I feel like I'm the type of fighter that pulls out whatever is necessary to win. You know, I mean, I, I think a lot of people would agree with you. Um, you know that Jamel Herring fight, you took it to him, won that one pretty clearly. Um, the Lomachenko fight, like I said, a lot of people felt like you won that fight anyway. So fight against um, Shakur would be a really good one. How do you think he kind of fares against some of the other elite guys at 135, like Aloma, Devin Haney? Do you think he has what it takes to, you know, kind of get to that elite level? Yeah, I think he is an elite level now. Um, I think he's a great fighter, great boxer. He keeps his distance very well. And I've been seeing him progress in the sense of really taking it to fighters and and more in a dominating fashion um, and bully his way to a, bully his fighters down, which is an impressive thing to do. So I think he's a great fighter. So if if it was up to you, man, if it was up to Jermaine Ortiz, would, that, would, would Shakur Stevenson be the fight that you want next? Because, yo, man, listen, if you beat Shakur... Nobody can deny. Yeah, I, I, I'm. Ta I'll take anybody, man. And it's always been like that in my career, you know. Um, especially greats. I feel like I'm here to create a legendary status for myself to create history. And the only way I'm gonna be able to do that is by beating great fighters, not by you know picking and choosing right opponents just to continue to make my stock look good. But to I really believe I'm that great, and I really believe in fighting the great fighters. And I believe Shakur is one of them. Momachenko is one of them. You know, Devin is one of them. And just fighting these guys and beating them is going to create that legendary status for myself. You know, like I've, like I've continued to say throughout this interview, man, like you've really, you really, really impressed a lot of people, man. A lot of people. Media row, everybody was kind of looking around like, yo, this, this guy's really taking it to Loma right now, man. Um, Really wanted to know, just in your view, because, you know, the game plan is kind of to have, you know, Loma fight Devin and then the winner eventually fight Shakur. You know, you already said that you believe that Devin is going to beat um, Loma. So, you know, it could be Devin against Shakur, man. I know that's a tough question, <laughs> but who do you got winning that? Who do you give the, the edge to? I'll give it to Shakur. Wow. Okay. Can you um, elaborate on that, man? 
Not really. I just feel like he's very good at controlling his distance. It, 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 it's a it's a tough fight because at least hard to view it because Devin's a boxer. Shakur is good at keeping his defense, but he could come down, like I said, be aggressive too and walk his people down. Mm -hmm. um, that would be an interesting fight. I don't know how entertaining it would be. Mm. <laughs> you know, I feel like the more excitement would be on trying to see something land action because they're both very defensive too and Shakur doesn't really get hit much. So it would be interesting to see how it plays out, but I don't think it would be an entertaining fight. So, you know, kind of to kind of go back to you against Shakur, um, I know you just said that Shakur against Devin wouldn't exactly be the most entertaining fight because of their styles and stuff like that. But, you know, seeing you box a few times live, like you have like really incredible defensive skills and offensive skills. You're not a guy that's just going in there and just marching forward and like just trying to get hit with everything. Like you're really defensive as well. So if you was to fight Shakur, would it be more of a chess match as well, where it's just like, all right, the fans might not like it a little bit, but, you know, or do you see it like an all-out war with them? How would you kind of see it playing out, man? Uh, I, don't, I can't even really elaborate on that. But um, I will say all boxing, my all boxing matches should be like a chess match. You know, you always got to be a couple steps ahead. You can't just be one step and just march forward and, you know, give and take type of type of fight. It's not, it's not that type of fight. There's always strategy and always thinking ahead gotcha now you know Devin looks like he's gonna be fighting Loma like I've said before that might be his last fight at 135 man um so you know all four of the belts could be vacant man that could be like a perfect opportunity for you to you know become a world champion in your own right um what do you kind of want to do in terms of you know kind of positioning yourself to say okay if Devin does drop all of the belts you know, I can move in and I can get a title fight. Like, is it, you know, more activity next year? What, like, how exactly do you want to map it out to be like, okay, I'm in the perfect position to fight for, like, the WBO, WBA, WBC, whatever? Uh, Definitely stay active. I felt good this year. I felt like I was very active this year. You know, three fights was pretty good. Mm -hmm. um, I'll get in early spring next year. And... Definitely, if he vacates the titles, I feel like I'll definitely be one of the guys lined up for a title shot, become world champion at 135, see how long I stay there, and then eventually I'll probably end up moving to 140 because it's all about making history and becoming legendary, like I mentioned at the beginning, and that's capturing world titles and moving up weight class and capturing more world titles and moving up weight class and capturing more titles. <laughs> I'm not mad at it, man. You know, ironically enough, you know, when I saw you um during fight week, like you're a pretty big guy, man. Like Loma is a bit smaller, I would say. But, you know, you're kind of a bigger guy, you know, bigger frame and stuff like that. Not really sure how the hell you make 135, man. But, you know, like how much longer do you see yourself kind of staying at that weight class, man? Uh, My goal is to become world champion at 135. Mm, so... Okay. As long as it takes, basically. Listen, once I become world champion at 135, then we'll talk about moving up. But that's my goal. Gotcha. And also, just um, a few more before I let you go. You know, uh, another fight that I think would be, you know, really fan-friendly and, you know, could really also put you on the map is, you know, former unified champion George Cambosis Jr., man. Um, yeah. you, I already see you smiling when I brought him up, man. So what do you kind of think about him as a fighter and how much would you love a fight with him, man? Uh, I think he's a good fighter, too. Uh, that fight would be great. I think that would be a very entertaining fight. Uh, the way he fights his style, my style, I think is going to be, uh, it would be more action, a lot more action and action packed. And I think the fans will love it. Uh, and I, I see that we could even end up fighting for, for a world title if, if it's vacant or anything like that. I see that coming along. You cool with going down to Australia if he asks, though, man? You cool with that? <laughs> I'll go anywhere, man. I'll go anywhere. I'm a fighter. I'm a fighter at heart. Like, I'll be telling people, be talking about the lottery and stuff like that, the Mega Millions. I'll be like, if I won that, I'll still be fighting. It wouldn't make a difference in my life, you know? Nah, I'll still be no, fighting. 
I, I don't even believe that, man. Ain't that the, the jackpot was like two billion, brother? You ain't fighting no more, man. <laughs> oh, I'll still be fighting. I'll still be fighting. I'll still be fighting. Oh man, you a better man than me. I win that two billion. I'm quitting everything, man. <laughs> I'm, I'll still you, be fighting. I'm not mad. Still be. Um, you know, just last thing I want to um kind of get your thoughts on, man. Well, just my last question I wanted to ask you is, you know, the the Loma fight didn't go your way, but um do. You know, do you kind of feel that, and you've been in the ring with him before and sparring and stuff like that, but this was like a real actual fight. Do you think that just alone being with him could probably take your game to the next level? And I ask you that because um, when Teofimo beat him um, like last year, I believe it was, or two years ago, whenever he fought him, Teo was just like, you know, just being in the ring with Loma, it, you know, raised his IQ, raised his game more. Do you think the same thing could happen to you, man? Well, from the sparring... And from the fight, I definitely got experience because it was my first time going 12 rounds. Yeah. So I got that under my belt, and that was a new – I feel like that put me in a world championship caliber because most – when you fight for 12 rounds, it's usually for a world title, you know. If it's not a world title, world championship fight, usually you fight in 10 rounds. Mm -hmm. uh, so I felt that put me on a new experience level, fighting 12 rounds. And – it's, it's tough because I've been watching Lomachenko for so many years, man, since I was an amateur. I've been watching Lomachenko. So I feel like mentally I was just always ready, even like when it came to sparring and the fight. I, I didn't really, like I said, wasn't surprised by anything because I've been watching him for so long. It's like everything I already kind of expected and, and knew was coming. Gotcha. And actually, I always do this, man. I always say, Last question, and then I end up asking one more question. <laughs> and so, you know, my apologies, but yeah, yeah. wanted to know one more thing because I've asked you um, before, how do you see um, Tank versus Ryan playing out? And, you know, you said it's a real close fight, 50-50. You gave the edge to, to Gervonta. Um, you know, it might not be incredibly likely, but, you know, let's just say you get the call to fight Gervonta. He's an aggressive guy, a lot of power. You know, you're an aggressive guy, can box your ass off. <laughs> you know, how do you see that fight playing out? And would you call Gervonta, outside of yourself, would you call Gervonta the best guy at 135? And if not, who who would you say is the best at 135? Not including yourself. I'll say right now, Devin Haney. Devin Haney got all the belts. So right now he's on the top of the food chain. Take the, take the belts away, man. Skill for skill, man. Take the belts away. Skills. Take your time, brother. No rush. <laughs> oh, we including Shakur in this? Got to. He had 135 now. I have to. I give it to Shakur. Okay. Got it. And, to and and you didn't answer the, the previous question. Like, how would you see a fight between yourself? And oh, I think, I think that would be a great fight. And obviously, I see myself winning. And that would be a good fight. That would be an entertaining fight as well. Because mm -hmm. he comes forward. I could box and... I know I, I, if I want to, I could bang whenever I want to as well. Uh, I think that would be a great entertaining fight. Got you, man. Really appreciate you taking out the time to talk to me, man. I know a lot of people really wanted to, you know, kind of hear you a little bit and stuff like that. So really appreciate you taking out the time, man. No problem. Thank you. I appreciate it.